Hi, welcome to this lecture on environmental adaptation for animals. On the last title of the metabolic rate, we are dealing now on the energetics of aerobic activity. So far, we have learned that we have different ways to produce energy for our muscles, but the only way to produce it sustainable for the long distance running is to use aerobic catabolism. But when we are comparing the oxygen consumption of different animals, we first must deal on the technical problem, how to measure the wild population. So we can have these kind of birds that are living in the ocean and laying the eggs in the island, then flying and catching fish. You can't do that in the laboratory. Of course, you can take one animal and measure the basal uh, uh, oxygen consumption but that's not what it does every day so you must have some kind of device to measure that what the animal is doing where it's doing it and how much oxygen it's used and in this animal of course we can me measure that okay where the, this animal exists this masked booby, Namia Sula, it's living in Caribbean island, and usually the fishing area is about 100 kilometers away from the island. So it travels 100 kilometers, catches the fish, flies 100 kilometers back. And this fishing expedition takes about 9 hours per day. And 80% of that is spent on the traveling. So it travels 3.5 hours then fl uh, catch the fish for one hour, then three and a half hours flying back, etc. And flying is consuming energy. And that's why, although the animal weighs about two kilograms, it needs half a kilogram of fish every day. And then 300 grams for the offspring. And although half a kilogram of fish is uh, quite a lot, so there's a lot of proteins, a lot of fat. The only way to produce enough ATP for the muscles to fly 200 kilometers every day is to use aerobic catabolism. And this energy consumption of these fishing birds is so enormous that actually it's been evaluated that when uh, we are taking all the fish eating birds in the, uh, on, the, on this planet, they are consuming as much fish as the humans are doing. So uh, it's quite an uh, energy consumption way to get some food. And then for the individual animals, actually they must decide that, okay, should they fly as fast as possible to the fishing area? Or should they fly a little bit slower? Or could they actually swim 100 kilometers? So what is the way of travel that is consuming least energy? Because the way of transport affects on the energy consumption. On human, we consume maybe 6 kilojoules per minute when we are laying down or sitting, and a little bit more when we are standing. So when we are doing in, uh, in office work, we are consuming very little energy. Then, when we are walking, depending on the speed of the walking, affects directly on the metabolic rate. Uh, so, faster we are walking, more energy we are using per minute. Surprise, surprise. And then, if we are traveling faster, we, the metabolic rate increases quite drastically. So, when we are choking, their me metabolic rate is already uh, 60 kilojoule per minute, and then we are, when we are running, it's 10 times more than when lying down. And then, the problem actually is that, okay, when we are tra traveling, it's not only that, okay, how many kilojoules per minute, but how many kilojoules per ki uh, kilometer. So what is the most effective way? So when we are comparing these, different ways to transport, it's giving us different kind of result. So now the walking slow speed is actually consuming more energy than the walking high speed, because now we must walk two times longer time. And also 
in this higher speed uh, transportation. So although the running consumes maybe 20% more than jogging uh, per, per minute, but because we are sooner in the distance than the actually for 10 kilometers, the jogging and running consumes as much energy. And of course, if you want to save energy, you take the bike, because that's the most effective way to move from one place to another. And if you try to avoid spending all your energy, you are not swimming the whole 10 kilometers, because then you would need maybe 12 megajoule per, per 10 kilometers. So the way of transport affects drastically on the energy consumption. And that's why we should measure the energy consumption during the traveling of different animals in different speed. And therefore, we should actually measure the movement and the energy consumption at the same time. So we know that, okay, the metabolic rate depends on the activity. And the activity in freely moving animal can be changing a lot. So that's why it, it's easier to measure it in a constant physical work, like running in a treadmill. So when the cat is now moving, it consumes oxygen, and we can measure from the belt that, okay, how fast it's moving. So we can move the belt in a constant speed, and now the animal must move uh, in, in the same speed to put, uh, be in the same position. And furthermore, we can mo change the angle to simulate uphill running or downhill running. And this treadmill is very versatile. So we can use it for cockroaches, land crabs, or slow animals like turkeys, or very fast animal like cheetah. And even this treadmill can be put in underwater. So all kind of walking or running. So when we are using legs for a movement, we can measure how fast we are moving. But then, of course, not all the animals are walking. They can fly or swim. And that's why we can use tunnels. And these kind of wind tunnels or windmills, we it's easy to produce. It's been made in already in the 60s. So there's a propel to give a constant flow of air against which this bird must, must fly. And then there's a mask on this bird to measure the oxygen consumption. But also we can have tunnels where the water is falling and then the fish must uh, for a swim slower or faster to keep the position and then we can measure how much oxygen they, they were using. And of course nowadays we have these modern telemetrics. So there's a, a open flow respirometer so you, it's, it's, there are valves helping you to breathe and then there is a probe measuring that okay how much oxygen was consumed so how much oxygen is removed from the air. And they are sending the information directly to the computer and now the animal can move not on the uh, treadmill but on the uh, in the race or whatever. And okay with these kind of devices we can measure directly that okay how much oxygen is used. But then the other way is to measure the average daily metabolic rate. And quite often it's done with uh, radioactive uh, chemicals. So we can have double labeled water. So instead of hydrogen, we are now using deuterium. And then instead of regular oxygen, now we are having a labeled oxygen. And then we can evaluate that, okay, how fast from the blood sample this oxygen is eliminated. And the trick is that, okay, when we are having the energy metabolism and producing carbon dioxide, 
it's in isotopic equilibrium with the oxygen atoms in the body. So this labeled oxygen is released with carbon dioxide. And the tricky part actually is that, okay, also we are getting rid of water as tears and sweat and MP, etc. So that's why we need the other label, the, the deuterium. So put it as simple as possible, we have an animal containing a lot of water. And we add some deuterium uh, water with a radioactive label also on the oxygen, and then we get a mixture of different kind of water molecules either with one deuterium or two deuterium, either with regular oxygen or then this labeled oxygen. And when we are having the respiration, we are getting rid of carbon dioxide. And some of these carbon dioxide, there exist this labeled uh, oxygen also. But at the same time, we are having different kind of water export, and that can have, ha, have deuterium or this oxygen that we have containing this label. So then we can measure that, okay, how much labeled oxygen was released during this water export to analyze that, okay, what was the respiration rate. Okay, this can be done quite easily, but it also can be done in very even more simple way. Just to measure that, okay, what was the daily activity? And then calculating the cost in uh, some activities based in the laboratory experience. So for example, over here is the, in the energy budget of or budget of, of African penguin. So when it's swimming underwater, it consumes 10 times more energy than when they are maintaining in the la land. And when it's resting under the, uh, in the water surface, it, time, it uses maybe two times more than maintaining on the land. But then, depending on the duration, you can see that actually maintaining on the land consumes as much energy per day than swimming underwater. And then you can just calculate, okay, what is the sum of, of the uh, total daily cost? And, well, besides this, we have also the way to, to measure it. We can measure the physiology of activity in the wild. So we can have uh, ultra monitors to measure the body functions, like heart rate or physical activity, etc. So you have a a tool that is the size of a matchbox and and attach it on the on the on the animal to measure the heart rate etc and then you can measure it either as a telemetric so it's transmitting the uh, data all the time or then you can have a data locker that is collecting the data and Usually these are quite nice tools. So now the animal is in the wild, in this natural environment. And then if you are collecting the animal again, then you can get the data locker back. And it didn't harm the animal much at all. But um, as an as example of failure in this kind of experiment, maybe uh, 10 years ago we had uh, these data lockers in these same Crucian carbs. To see that okay what is the heart rate and physical activity of these animals in their natural environment in the pond and although the, the size of these data lockers was actually a little smaller than a matchbox and they weigh only a few grams the data lockers and the skeletons of these fish are still in the bottom of the pond so uh, we never got these animals back. Thank you.